This is the case number IT0143, I, the prosecutor versus Dragon Obranovic. Uh, appearances for the prosecution, Mr. McCloskey. Yes, Mr. President, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council, Colonel Obranovic. My name is Peter McCloskey. Appearing with me today is Dean Manning, the lead investigator. Um, Mark Vlasic, a legal assistant, and Janet Stewart, the case manager. Thank you. Thank you. For the accused. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Jarko Nikolic. I'm an attorney at law from Yugoslavia, and the registrar has appointed me defense counsel for Mr. Obrenovic at his initial appearance today. And is it only for the initial appearance? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Obrenovic, can you uh, hear the proceedings in a language which you understand? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Yes, I do hear the proceedings in a language I understand. Can you give us your full name? I am Dragan Obrenovic. And uh, what is the date uh, upon which you believe you were born? <coughs> the 12th of April, 1963. Uh, what is the address at which you resided before you were arrested? Street of Svetog Save, 5C. Zvornik. Thank you, sir. You may sit down for a moment. Uh, Mr. Nikolic, uh, it's the common practice in the tribunal these days for the accused to waive his right to have the indictment read out in full before entering a plea. Have you been able to discuss this with your client? Yes, Your Honor, I have discussed this with Mr. Obrenovic, and he stated the following, that he received the indictment, he understood it, and there is no need for it to be read out in its entirety today. He agrees that only the counts that uh, he has been charged with be read to him today so that he could enter his plea. Uh, does he understand that uh, he has to plead within 30 days, but uh, he may enter a plea today if he wishes to do so. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Obrenovic is prepared to enter his plea with regard to the counts in the indictment today. Thank you. Well, Mr. Obrenovic, would you stand up, please, sir? Uh, in answer to count one, in which you are charged with complicity in genocide, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, not guilty. Uh, in count two, you are charged with extermination as a crime against humanity. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, I'm not guilty. In count three, you are charged with murder as a crime against humanity. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, I'm not guilty. In count four, you are charged with murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war. Uh, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, not guilty. And for the fifth count, you are charged with persecution on political, racial, and religious grounds as a crime against humanity. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, not guilty. Sit down, please, sir. <clears throat> now, Mr. McCloskey, um, are you able to tell me in what form the supporting material was at the time that it was presented to the confirming judge? Um, 
I don't know exactly what you mean by form. Was it in a redacted form or was it uh, uh, unredacted? Unredacted, uh, fully. Um, uh, is there any, going to be any problem in relation to protective measures before you comply with the uh, rather stringent requirements of Rule 66A1? Um, no, Your Honor. We, uh, in a similar trial, we had no problems, uh, though I think that was largely because of the understanding of Defense Counsel and the prosecution that worked well together. And I, we don't need any, if we can get that same understanding, we shouldn't need any special protective measures. And um, are you in a position to uh, serve that material uh, within the time limited? Um, yes, Mr. President. We, um, I had a chance to speak with uh, Mr. Nikolic uh, today as well as immediately before coming into court, and he would prefer not to receive anything until um, um, Colonel Obunovich has chosen a, a lawyer, and, and in which case we will be able to provide that material, which we have ready to, be, to provide him uh, when, we, when we know who, who is representing the accused. Well, that's a sensible solution. Uh, you will, of course, keep an eye on the uh, clock, as it were. Uh, now, uh, may I make a suggestion so that you will be ready for it when it comes up later? Uh, obviously, a lot of the evidence in this case will be the same as it was against uh, General Kerstich. And um, uh, the provisions of Rule 92 bis D, uh, transcripts of proceedings, uh, transcript of evidence in other proceedings may be tendered provided that it does not go to an act or the conduct of the accused. Uh, no doubt that will be uh, taken advantage of. Uh, by the prosecution and perhaps also by the accused. When it's going to be tendered, uh, it would be very helpful for the trial chamber to have um, a short summary of what the uh, prosecution asserts is established by that evidence so, uh, and with references to the transcript itself. It saves a, an awful lot of reading because when you do get hundreds of pages of transcript from some other trial, it's not exactly an easy task to follow, if I may say so, with respect to counsel who conduct those examinations, just what it is which is sought to be proved. So it would help the trial chamber very much if we have a very short statement of what the prosecution says uh, that transcript will prove with a reference to the page and the lines in that transcript. It will, of course, take you a little time, but it will save everybody an enormous amount of time at the trial. Yes, we're in a position, as you might imagine, we have summaries for all, most all the witnesses that will be used in this case, and it's just a matter of adapting them to the transcripts and the, and the lines. So that shouldn't be a problem, especially as we learn what, you, uh, what kind of length and what kind of detail you prefer. Well, a little bit more than we get in those brief summaries uh, in the pretrial brief. Uh, it's just that uh, having done this now in two trials where we've had long transcripts, uh, either, you spend, either you spend all night reading it to keep up uh, or you have somebody else do that exercise for you. And it seems to me very much preferable that uh, we get somebody else to do it for us. We're in a position to be able to do that. Thank you very much. Now, is there any other matter that you wish to raise at this stage? Uh, no, Mr. President. How about you, Mr. Nicolich? Do you want to raise any other matter at this stage? Your Honor, I just wish to notify you of the following, that I have suggested to Mr. Obrenovic that he engage a lawyer as soon as possible to act as his defense counsel due to the procedure that will follow. Thank you. That is very important, if I may emphasize that for the, for the sake of your client, that he does have counsel retained, uh, that's permanent counsel, as soon as possible, because it is only in that way that the uh, preparation for the trial can get underway. Uh, assuming that the United Nations uh, produces these uh, ad litem judges uh, later this year, there's every chance that this case will get a hearing sometime early next year. So uh, uh, should be, there should be no delays at any stage. 
Uh, well, with that, uh, I will adjourn. All right. For you, Vilvey.